Hello and welcome to Photographic Connections, the podcast where we create connection to self, nature and others through the art of photography. My name is Kim Grant, the founder of Photographic Connections and your host for this podcast. And today I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Emily Endine onto the podcast. Emily is a nature photographer who has a very specific love for the coast. We speak about her love for wild swimming and how immersing herself in the sea can help her to create really interesting images. We also speak about the importance of following your love and passion in photography and how we can gain inspiration from others. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Emily Endine. Hi Emily, thank you so much for coming onto the podcast this week. I am super excited to speak with you because I've followed your work for a number of years now on Instagram and then a few weeks ago I came across a really inspiring video on the Wex Photographics page about you and your mental health and how photography has helped you. So I really felt that you'd be a fantastic guest for this podcast. Your, your work is everything that Photographic Connection stands for. So before we delve deeper into that, I would love it if you could go way back to the beginning of your photography journey and share the story of what got you into photography in the first place yeah thank you and hello Kim yeah it's really nice to be here so thank you for inviting me on um yeah so I think looking back to when I was a child I had like a little plastic film camera that I remember I used to take around with me and photograph like my family when we were in the new forest or by the beach in Bournemouth um, and I just remember that obsession with taking the photo, sending it off and waiting for the film to come back and seeing what was actually in focus was the first point. <laughs> but I always remember that that love was there. So there was already something instilled within me just capturing moments, I guess. Um, and then I think as I grew up, I didn't really have a camera as such, but I remember when I had my first job, kind of like camera phones were, were coming out. So I was using that a lot then. And then it must probably about 12 to 15 years ago, my wife bought me my first DSLR. And I remember being so overwhelmed with all the functionality of it and all the buttons and just thinking, ah, oh, this is too much and not really knowing what, what I wanted to get out of it. So I kind of shot in auto for a while. And then sometimes I wouldn't even take it out with me because it was so big and heavy. And then one day it was like, I need to learn how to use this properly. And and I remember I would look at other people's photography and think, oh, that looks really nice. How do I kind of create something like that? And realizing that it's all about light and I wanted to head out at sunrise and capture those magical moments. So I think that was like the real part of the journey for me was discovering sunrise and actually getting up before everybody else and going to beautiful places and um, being down the beach, you know, before the rest of the world's awake, seeing all these ama amazing colours and displays that nature puts on for you. And I think once I discovered that and learned how to record that in my camera to the best of my ability, that was when the addiction began. <laughs> and, you know, I just go out pretty much every morning before work because that was my feel good factor for the morning to kind of get me through sat behind a desk all day um so yeah I was just then getting out as much as I could and yeah then that's led me to where I am today I guess wow it's amazing I should mention for those listening if they hear any background noise on your side it's because you you live in a van and you're currently parked uh, by a road so we've got all the the amazing cars going by there which is is uh it's lovely I actually want to get onto that in a minute about kind of van life and, and spending your life living in a van because it's a, a very I guess fun way to to live but I wanted to kind of go back there to, to what you were saying there about you you getting into photography and about how getting out there early in the morning was like a massive release for you before you you had that time sitting at the desk and it's brilliant to hear that because it's we need that release don't we we need something that can get us out and about give us that headspace that clarity and that connection to nature and it's brilliant that photography gave you that mm. from an early an early start point yeah, I think it's super important. So I think I always say to people, whether you're in photog into photography or not, it's about getting outside. So for me, taking a lovely picture is kind of the icing on the cake. But it's all, that whole experience of just being out, like I say, sunrise before everybody else is up, feels so much more special. It's so quiet and 
you know, you've just got the sounds of nature. So whether that's the waves lapping at the shore or the seagulls, or, you know, whatever that may be, it kind of engulfs all of your senses. And I think that's so important just to remember that we have all of that out there and it's all completely free. Like you can go out and have a, an amazing time. And like I say, taking photos is the icing on the cake, but it's the whole experience for me. I think that that's what makes it feel so special. Yeah, definitely. And how have you sort of transitioned? I mean, how long have you been doing like van life for and, and living in your van? And how does that help you to connect with, with these moments when you've got these gorgeous scenes completely to yourself? Yeah, so we've been living in the van for just over a year now. Um, so we've kind of experienced all the seasons, which has been quite interesting. <laughs> some difficult times, some great times. So, yeah, it's, it's been a good balance. Um, but for me, it was allowing me to be able to travel different places for photography, but also being able to step away from... I had a day job. I was working insurance, doing a nine-to-five desk job. And I'd been in that industry like 20 years and I was doing photography on the side and slowly building some kind of photography business and thinking that that would be my dream job, but never really knowing how to make that leap because it's you've got to be quite brave, haven't you? It's taking a step into something that's quite unknown. And, and I think moving into the van, at the same time, I was able to step away from that security of the day job as well and really give the photography a push. So I think having those two elements go hand in hand, it's just meant that we can travel wherever we want and have all these amazing experiences and be different places to be able to photograph them in a different way with fresh eyes. That's always quite exciting to go somewhere new. But also, on the other hand, familiar places I'm always connected with because I, I know it through and through. You know where the sun's going to rise or you know what's going to unfold and there's always the unexpected of whatever nature throws at you but it's exciting going from new locations to familiar locations um so yeah being in the van has just allowed us that freedom um as well just that as an example um i was photographing a wedding a few months ago and then a job came up where there someone was looking for a photographer in the same area the following week and it meant that i could say yes and and i thought back to you know when I had the day job and I'd have to take days off to go and do photography things and I wouldn't have been able to say yes because I'd have had to have been somewhere else working for someone else and now I get to work for me so I get to take take the jobs that I love and that I want to do things that I feel passionate about which is quite important to me. Oh, it's incredible. It sounds like the living in the van has given you so much freedom, so much freedom to, to live the life you want to immerse yourself in nature and the landscape as much as you possibly can. And, and that freedom, like you say, to take on jobs that you otherwise wouldn't, which is, is amazing. And you did mention there how brave it is, I think, to take a step into the unknown and to, to do these things. But you can hear in your voice there how much of a positive experience this has been for you and how it's opened so many doors that otherwise wouldn't have been there. Yeah, definitely. And I think when we first stepped away into this kind of life, it was all very exciting because everything's so new and it's like, oh my God, we're going in the van, we can go here, we can go there. And it was only when it got to the, the year anniversary that I looked back and I thought, actually, that was quite brave. People, people probably thought we were crazy, like giving up the security of a day job, walking away from a house. <laughs> like there's, there's all these things that society kind of puts on you that you should be doing and to step away from that looking back, felt quite brave, I think. Yeah. No, it certainly is a, a very, very brave thing to do in, in many respects. But I, I like to see life as an experience. And I think we're, when we have this drive to do something, it's like it's it's so much better, I think, to give it a go rather than to have regrets because you just never know. And it, it's nice when things work out positively. And I think when you are really embracing who you are, where you want to be, what you want to do, then, yeah, everything's a learning experience. Everything's an ex uh all this kind of thing. So it's always, um, it's great to, to have that. And I love that you, you've had that. And I also love this because your photography is so immersive. So not only are you living in a van and you're going around to the places that you love, you actually, you know, you, the coast is your main love and you go in the sea specifically in your wetsuit and sometimes in your in your swimming costume as well in the warmer weather with your camera and you're just fully embodying the experience of being in nature and then channeling that into your imagery so I wondered if you could speak a little bit about that yeah so you're right I'm drawn to the coast and I think I always have been and um, and with my photography I would get up super early we live by the beach so I'd go down the beach for sunrise 
and I'd always be at the shore at the shoreline. And then it was mainly during lockdowns and just trying to find even more feel good things to do in the mornings before work. Um, I started getting in the sea every day. And it was at that point that it dawned on me that I could try and photograph my experiences there. And it was purely for a personal kind of project, I guess, was trying to figure out how I could photograph what I was seeing. So I'd be going out in the water at sunrise and you'd see the sun just come up over the horizon and all the colours that would kind of come through on the ripples of the water. On completely calm days, you get this amazing colour that's just reflected from the sky. And then on rougher days, obviously, it's um, quite chaotic in the water. And I just wanted to be able to photograph what I was seeing and try and... I guess, capture an emotion of how I was feeling about it as well, because, I mean, photography is all subjective, isn't it? So we can all look at something and feel something different from it. But I thought if I could put a piece of myself in how I feel in these images, um, then that was kind of just, like I say, a personal project for me. So, yeah, I was just figuring out how to do that. And I tried a GoPro and worked my way through a couple of different housings until I'd settled on, on what was working for me. And then I couldn't believe how you could capture that. Like, So some of my more abstract images are the sun might be coming up and I'm focusing literally on a ripple of water that's right in front of me. And I might fire off maybe 10 frames as the ripples are moving around. And, you know, one of those will then jump out to me that that's the one. That's the one that I love and the one that represented that moment for me. But it was realising that I could do that. And that added a whole nother game to my photography then because it's just, yeah, wanting to get out and create something different every day. And and I love that about photography. You can take it any way you like. It, you know, you can try every genre and, and find what you love. But then in a year's time, you might have grown into a different aspect of photography. Like there's no right or wrong. It's an art form, isn't it? And, and I love that about it, that we can all just channel it in different ways. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I used to be so connected to the coast and I still am. It's like one of my favourite places to photograph. But this summer, because I've moved into a town now that's surrounded by woodland, I'm suddenly finding myself so drawn to woodlands and I'm doing so much macro photography in the woodlands. And I'm just, I would never have thought I would have gone down this route. But it's amazing because you start opening up to different things and you you seem to have had that experience there with photographing the sunrises and then going into actually into the water and then more deeply connecting with with the world around you how do you feel when you're in the water because it must be a very different experience to photographing on on land yeah definitely and it's very I guess to use a word you use immersive because you're not just photographing what you see through your lens you are literally feeling everything that you're seeing through your lens so it's kind of like I don't know in the winter when it's really cold and if I'm photographing surf I'll know that I'll be in longer and I, I I'll wear a wetsuit but if I'm literally going in for the sunrise and coming back out again even in the winter months sometimes I'll just be in my bikini because I want to really feel it and obviously there's an element of safety and not staying in too long and there's there's so many factors you have to consider so I'm not saying, you know, just go straight out in winter and get hypothermia, but just being fully aware of all those all those other dangers. But being able to be in that environment, feel the water holding you and, and the cold water on your skin and you get that tingly sensation. And then as the sun comes up over the horizon, I get really engrossed in that moment. So it's it's kind of all encompassing. And I think it takes all of your senses, whereas being stood on the shoreline you know yeah you, you know where you are and you can feel it and you can see it and you can hear it but feeling it with your whole body and and every every part of you is just a a very interesting feeling because yeah you're, you're just fully in it and that photograph when I look back at that I can feel everything that I felt in that moment um and that's why that kind of photography, I guess, is really special for me. But I think as well, like you said, going into the woodland, I think with any environment that you're photographing in, I think it's so important to to be deeply connected with it because you see it in a different way. And I think, you, you know, with photography, you can get so caught up in the settings and techniques and, you know, standing on your tripod and just channeling through your your camera and thinking about the buttons and but actually there's so much beyond that and I think that's that's the important thing for me whether it's yeah the ocean woodland or wherever you are 
I think it's looking past the camera, really, and just being one with the environment and feeling that connection because I think then you really do come away with pictures that are so much more authentic rather than just paying one visit to that woodland. I think really getting to know what, what's out there in nature is so important to me. 100%. I did a really cool experiment recently where I went out into nature and I created some images based on what we're told make good photographs. So thinking really deeply about the settings I was using and the, the traditional compositional techniques. And then I went out a few days later and photographed images from the heart. So I thought about what am I being naturally drawn to here? And not really thinking about the settings, just thinking more about feeling into it and working with what was going on around me. And then I came home and a few weeks later, I looked at these images side by side and the one that was taken um you know the way we're told to take images there was just no feeling in it at all and it was bland and it was boring and the ones that I'd taken you know really immersing myself in the scene and kind of channeling what was going on around me they were just like wow like, I want that on my wall and I found people have been reflecting this back to me in recent weeks a lot of people are having the same experience. You can feel the energy that goes into an image that's created from emotion rather than one that's created purely from technical perspective. And you've just um, you've just confirmed that as well in your work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that that's so so right, isn't it? And yeah, because you're putting a piece of yourself into that. I think when your own emotion comes through in that image, and and I I think especially like going back years ago in my photography I never realized that and I was always photographing what I loved and I've never really confined myself to what I think I should be shooting I literally just follow what what I want to shoot and other people would come back to me and and give really good feedback and kind of reflect back the way I'd I'd shot a photo or the, what I'd seen in that photo, they were saying the same thing back to me. So it was really nice then that you think, oh, actually, I have put my heart into that photo and people can see that. Mm, definitely. And I know you occasionally do the odd kind of workshop with people. So how do you manage to do that sort of thing with people because that's one thing I struggle with sometimes people are often wanting the technicalities and the settings and things whereas I want to try and inspire them or, or help them to build that connection and give them tools and techniques to do that so how do you find given that your work is so immersive that how do you find that working with other people and helping them in their journey yeah that's an interesting one because everyone approaches photography differently and and I found that quite a learning curve for me as well because I will get people who come out with me and they might just have a new camera and they want to learn how to use it and I've got other people who come out who do want to just go for a lovely walk and, and kind of channel that vision through what whatever appears to us and so I, I really like to go into my workshops with an open mind and we'll choose the location and normally it's a location that I know really well because I know what's there and whatever time of year it may be as to where the sun's going to be at, at sunset or whenever it is we're heading out. So I like to have like a basis of location, uh, what's there, what time of year, those kind of things and then we'll just work on it from there and just and just follow what we're drawn to because yeah everyone is so different which is much easier to do on a one-to-one -one because you can really tailor it to that person so I might ask them a few questions before we even meet and before we head out or we'll we'll grab a coffee first and uh, there's quite often a location that I go to it's got a nice cafe so we'll go grab a coffee and just have a really quick chat first because it's really nice just to get a feel from someone what their I guess what they're drawn to what their aim is what they want to get out of the, the session um but then a group can be very different because I only do groups of three. I think it's nice to keep it quite small and intimate because you can't cover off too much with too many people, I think. Uh, so three people is really nice. But yeah, you could have three completely different people who want to look at different things. But then that's nice because we'll, we'll go to a, a certain section and I'll say kind of all set up and see what you're drawn to if you want to go on your tripod and, and channel that bit or if you just want to follow those flowers and shoot some macro then that's cool too and I'll just work my way through and and yeah answer different questions or, or see what their vision is because I think that's the important thing is to make sure that they come away with something and yeah if I can kind of instill the way I see things or the way I do things then I think that's a really nice way to share your knowledge and yeah, I never pretend to know everything. I just know what works for me. And if people want to kind of take a piece of that, then that's really lovely. 
Yeah, that's a lovely way to approach things, definitely. I kind of maybe see us as like facilitators and just helping to to give people that slow down time and help them to really unearth what they're feeling drawn to. And then that's where, where the magic happens, uh, which is beautiful. And speaking of magic, one thing it says on your Instagram is that you love to seeing the magic in everything. So what, what do you mean by that? I mean, it's quite clear, I think, but I'd love you to, to delve into that a little bit. Yeah, so I think throughout my journey in photography, I've kind of gone from a lot of landscapes to trying different things. And and I think now kind of probably, I don't know whether I could say I've been a professional photographer, probably about seven or so years. I think during that time, the way that I've channeled my personal projects and the way I've made my money out of photography has been in so many different areas and and I think in the beginning I was told you can't be the jack of all trades you need to choose one area and you need to focus on that and I listened to that in the beginning and I thought okay landscapes is where my passion is that's where I'm going to stick to but I soon realized that there's all these other things happening around that there are these magical fleeting moments and it's not necessarily just you have to pick one genre nature is incredible and give me a sunrise and I'm out there capturing the magic but also you know I can go to an an event and photograph that and I can see these little moments within it and you know whether it's the interactions between people or um it could be I shoot weddings and obviously there's there's magical moments within that there's emotion there's there's all these kind of different things going on and I think for me my photography is very rounded there's all kinds of elements to it but I think that skill set you can apply across the board and and I think or I'd like to think that I can see those magical moments and you know somebody might look at these everyday occurrences or everyday objects that are around us but there's always something special within that and I think it's having that ability to see that and photograph it so it took me a long long time to shake off that that comment about you can't be the jack of all trades Because why can't I be good at photography in general? Why can't I apply my skill set across the board? There's no reason why I can't. So actually just follow what you're drawn to and what you love and you will find that magic within each thing. A hundred percent. That's one thing I love about this podcast is everybody's story and what they do is is so different, but it's also intertwined in, in many ways. But I spoke to somebody called Victoria Hack, who's uh, from England, but she's based in, in Canada. And she's, uh, would definitely yes, echo what you I'm said. familiar yeah. with Victoria's work. Yeah, she's lovely. Um, she would definitely echo what, what you were saying there. You know, she, she does weddings and events and all, but also her landscapes and editorial work. And she's, again, she was kind of told, you need to do this, you need to do that. But she's always kind of gone against the grain and just done her own thing. And it's worked out so well for her. And then you get other photographers who are very much fixed on one or two things and they have great success as well so it's about following what's true to you isn't it but it's very easy when you get comments particularly in the beginning about something about creating a a, a life for ourselves as you know businesses self-employed um you know people you get these comments and it does give you a knock because it's almost like your inner intuition and guidance is like oh I've been told this but I'm feeling something else and as you explained there it takes a while to to overcome that doesn't it yeah, I think, it, you know, a lot of people have comments to make and and think they should tell you how to do things. And it comes from a good place, I'm sure. No one's giving you terrible advice that, in their opinion. But actually, you, you can listen to it. But at the end of the day, you can only do what's right for you. And I think it's best to follow your heart and follow your intuition about what you want to do. Same with anything in life, I guess. Um, Yeah, and I'm a a big fan of Victoria's work as well, actually. And I followed her for years. And I loved how, following her on Instagram, you can see that she has this skill set that she applies to to any situation. And her pictures always look really dreamy, really magical. And yeah, so I guess she's a huge inspiration of mine, actually. Um, So you you can look to people like Victoria and see, actually, she's doing really well because she's doing what she wants to do. And I think that's Mm. inspirational. 100% definitely um, I wanted to go back there to you you've mentioned a number of times getting up early and going out for, for the sunrise have you always been a morning person because many people struggle to get out there first thing in the morning <laughs> yeah no I haven't I haven't always been a morning person I think it's since finding photography 
Um, I think before that, kind of like, I don't know, late teens, early 20s, it was all about going out with your friends, drinking. So it would be late nights, which means late mornings. Um, so I think that that period of my life and where I hadn't discovered photography yet, yeah, I definitely wasn't a morning person. Um, but as soon as you find photography and you realise that the, the hours that you want to be up because you've got the magical light and quiet and peace and nobody else is around, I think as soon as I discovered that, I became a morning person. <laughs> yeah, it's re really strange. I found it quite easy to do because I had that huge love and passion for it. I think you just you find a way of making it work and it's all about habits I guess and once I start getting up for sunrise all the time it became easier and easier. It's amazing I love hearing how much photography changes so many people's lives it's just like the moment so many people are connected with a camera something changes within them and they're you know people have their different stories but it's like a lot of people speak about this shift and this suddenly they, they go from one thing to another or they feel one way and suddenly they feel another. And you can definitely see that in, in you, you know, just becoming a morning person purely because you want to be out there feeling that peace, that tranquility. But, you know, as you mentioned there, that peace and tranquility, it's not just about the photography, is it? It's about the full experience. Oh, yeah, completely. And don't get me wrong, there's times that I found it hard getting up and you hit snooze and you go to bed for another hour and then you get up and you see that actually you've missed sunrise and the light's gone really flat. It's cloudy now and it's miserable and people are out and about walking around and the whole atmosphere is different. If you actually get up, you know, say half an hour before sunrise, give yourself some time, make a coffee, get down the beach, um, you know, sometimes I might be set up with my camera and just, I'm just going to stand there in the moment, take a few photos, enjoy my coffee, watch the sunrise, or whether I'm getting in the water and, and enjoying that moment with the camera, then I'm getting out, getting dry, sitting with my coffee on the beach. It's that whole ritual, I think. And it's the whole, the whole atmosphere of that quiet time. There's so much more about it than, than heading out at 10 a.m., you know? So the light's so different and, you know, more people, more people can be quite annoying or louder and it just changes everything, doesn't it? Yeah. I also, there's something very special about being in the water early in the morning. You know, last year I was very into wild swimming. This year, for some reason, I've developed a real an inability to deal with the cold. I'm hoping I can get over that again for next year. But last year I went in the sea almost a hundred times. I was doing this like challenge um, and I just loved it. But my favourite times in the sea was always at sunrise. And one of my most memorable trips in the sea was it was minus two, there was frost on the beach and I just walked in in my swimming costume, was in for two minutes and then came out. But it was it was so calm and there was like snow on the mountains across the sea and the light on the water was amazing. And I love that you're able to do that regularly and bring that then together with photography because it's it's such a magical time to be in the ocean, isn't it? Yeah, it truly is. And yeah, I've had similar experiences where it's been minus two or minus three or something like that. And you walk across the beach and it's crunchy under your feet where even the sand's frosty. And then you get in the water and actually down on the south coast um, in Bournemouth, the water, we were taking a thermometer in for a while. Um, it was kind of like six to eight degrees. So actually the water's warmer than the air temperature and the frosty beach that you've just walked across. So even though it's cold, it's not it's not unbearably cold. It's more kind of like once you've got out of the water and you're back in that, that cold air, it's a case of knowing that you have to quickly get warm and quickly get dry and, and dressed. And once you are and you're warming up with that coffee and and you've had that ex magical experience has put that smile on your face, it's kind of the, the, whole, the whole situation, I guess, of just that feel-good factor. You, you can really feel it all. You can feel everything, can't you? A hundred percent. It's it's amazing. It's like going back to that immersion. It's just that there's something so calming about being in a body of water. And for some reason, it does seem to definitely be heightened, I find, in, in the winter. And it is always that, that weird feeling of, oh, the water's actually not too bad. And as you say, it's when you get out, it's just like, oh, it's it, that's not a very pleasant experience sometimes. But it's um, when you're in there, it, it makes it all worth it. And then that euphoric feeling afterwards, it's it's just lovely. So... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I just found it hard in the winter when you've got numb, cold fingers and you're trying to get dressed and you can't function properly. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, you find you find ways though. Like we we'd make sure we wore like proper wetsuit boots and gloves just so that the extremities don't don't kind of go numb and yeah you, you find what works for you and I think everyone's so different and um, especially when it comes to kind of cold water and wild swimming you know some people can handle different levels of cold to other people and people would say to me oh my gosh how how did you not get hypothermia and I think it's knowing your own personal limits there's no set rules it's if it's that cold, I will wait until I know the sun's coming up in like two minutes, get in the water, have a bob around, watch the sun come up, take my photos and then get out again. So, I, you know, I might not be in there very long in the winter, but it's still that that moment of, of pure magic. Mm, definitely. And is it, is it always sunrise you do photography or do you sometimes go at different times of day as well? Yeah, I think I love sunrise because like the things we've touched on, you know, that, that quiet time and that, that magical light. But yeah, I mean, I love sunset too. It's just quite different because you know that there'll be other people there at sunset. Not everybody gets up at sunrise. Um, so yeah, I still love sunset. It's just a bit busier. But also, you know, if there's going to be a storm coming or there's just interesting weather conditions, I mean, that can be chased throughout the day, can't it? Like if I knew... If I was down here on the south coast and I know there's a storm coming and I would probably, you know, travel to the different beaches or the different piers just to try and get photos of, you know, the waves crashing against the piers or, you know, if you've got a break in the storm and there's some light and there's a rainbow or, you know, there's all these other things that are happening. Uh, quite often I find that I don't necessarily shoot during the day because it can be a flatter light or harsher light or it just doesn't really complement the scene as well unless there's interesting conditions but yeah I think my passion will always be sunrise um, but yeah you can you can go out anytime can't you any conditions and find something beautiful definitely it's good to know that isn't it I mean it was always sunsets that got me into photography but I, I love the sunrise moments as well but there's something for me about sitting watching the sun go down and then going into the dark time I don't know it's just always been so really appealing to me and it's I love how we're all so different and one thing I love now about doing a lot of the woodland stuff is I can go do photography at all times of day I can be in the woodland at midday and it's like because you're not always looking for the light especially when you're crawling around on the floor so it allows photography to be done anytime anywhere and it it takes away I think that pressure sometimes of or that need for for interesting light too which is is exciting but yeah we all have our own processes don't we and and I love that and I love hearing about other people's passions and yeah like you say we're all so different and we're all drawn to different things and and you know similar to group workshops that I do you know we can go to one spot and I'll be like oh here's some wild flowers on the coast and you will go find your own compositions just and then I'll come round and everyone kind of approaches it differently so they might get down low and shoot more of a macro aspect of a flower and someone else might set up on a tripod and try and go for the bigger expanse and and yeah I just love that we're all drawn to it so very differently it makes it really interesting it does it does definitely um yeah a hundred percent I think it's it's about really honoring the individuality of both ourselves and others and I think going through that process the more people I speak to about their photography journeys it's about really unearthing kind of who we are what we enjoy and giving ourselves permission to to follow what our heart wants to follow and I just love that you've managed to do that with with the sea and create images that are in many ways quite unique and different and I know there's a number of photographers out there that do similar photography to you but there's I just always find there's something with your images um and I, if I'm right in saying it was a few years ago you did a project and there was like people in the sea and you were photographing them yeah yeah. 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 I did. Um, it was the beginning of last summer. I did uh, People of the Ocean. Yeah. And I think because I'd because I'd found like especially during so say during lockdown days and we were going down the beach and having a swim in the morning before work, and there were different groups, different pockets of people that were kind of doing the same thing but in in their own worlds, and um, so we kind of kind of made a few connections and then when things start to open up again and we we'd start swimming with one of the local groups and we made a couple of really good friends 
that, that we're really good friends with now out, out of those kind of situations. And it made me think about the connections and why other people were going in the water and what they were getting out of it. And so I, I had this interest in getting their portrait of them in that environment, but also just asking them briefly, like, why they were doing it, what what drove them to it, what did they get out of it? So... Yeah, I've got a blog on my website and it's kind of got like a portrait of each person and a little snippet of what drives them to, to go in the ocean and what they get out of it. Because, um, yeah, yeah, I found it really, really interesting as to why everyone else was doing it too. Yeah, it's also lovely because we go out so many times and we're sharing the same places with people, but we never really speak to them. And it's like we're so disconnected. But what you did with that was you were bringing all those people on the beach you know, together in, in a project. You were telling everybody's story because we all have our own unique individual stories. And also it's almost bringing some of your other work together, you know, with your events and your weddings. It's like you're bringing the landscape together with the people, but showing people in the landscape and, and showing their connection and what they love and what why they're there and just in a beautiful artistic form which was lovely yeah I think yes it's not just about connection with nature yeah definitely connection with other people um and I think when I'm photographing people I like to to believe that I've made a, a deeper connection through my lens into getting to know that person and yeah, I think it's so much more than just picking up a camera and taking a photo of someone. I think there's so much more to it. And it's, you know, it's quite a, a, a different experience being entrusted to take someone's portrait, especially when they're being quite vulnerable. And, you know, some of their reasons were quite a, you know, a personal deep connection and a, a, a reason that they were doing it. So, yeah, just allowing that space for them to to tell me and tell the world why they're doing it, but also being vulnerable enough to, to open up and and talk to me and let me take their photo. Yeah, it's lovely because, you know, they were just normal people just enjoying, like you said, the sea and the beach and it's suddenly they're involved in this project. But it's beautiful because it brings you together, brings them together, brings the whole thing together and you can see it all, all as one. And I guess it's, it's a lovely thing to do off the back of the pandemic as well when many people were probably feeling a bit isolated and stuff too. It's, it's showing that connection to something you're connected to but that you share with all these wonderful people. Yeah, and I got to know quite a, a few amazing people out of it and yeah whether it's swimmers surfers like I've made quite a few friends down the beach now so you know more often than not you go for a walk down there and there's someone to say hello to someone that you recognize and that's really lovely it kind of gives you that community feel you know Bournemouth's a massive town and there's so many people but I can go down there and that there probably be someone that I know or knows me and that's really lovely Oh, it's definitely lovely to have that, 100%. And one thing I just love to end on is, you know, where do you think your life would be if you'd never discovered photography? Oh, my goodness. I don't know if that's worth even thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a weird one, actually, because it, I, I've thought about it before because that really consumes my life. Like, literally every day, I'm either taking photos, editing photos, talking about photos <laughs> or planning the next photos, like literally every day. So, yeah, I, I really don't know. I just, yeah, I think I'm really thankful for having photography because I think if I didn't have photography, perhaps I wouldn't have such a deep connection with nature and the world around me. Maybe I'd be still living in a, a bit of a blinkered world of you know, waking up, going to the gym, going to work, sitting and watching TV or, you know, all of those things. Like, I've always loved going to the beach ever since I was really little with my family. So I have great memories of that. Maybe that's where my love of the beach and nature began. But I think with the camera, I just see it in a whole different way and I formed such a deep connection. I think without that, it's, yeah... I don't know, maybe I'd, I'd, I'd be, I wouldn't be so happy. Um, yeah, I definitely wouldn't be as happy. So, yeah, I, I don't really know where I'd be without it, to be honest. Oh, it's so joyous to hear that it's it had such be, a positive. Yeah, it would just be a massively different world. I know that much. 
Yeah. It's just so lovely that it's had such a positive impact on your life and that it's allowed you to live this this happy life you're living now, doing what you love and being able to make a living from it. And it's it's a very inspiring story, I think, as well. And I love that you've just, you know, shared your passion and pursued your passion. And it's it's so beautiful to hear, Emily. So for anyone that's that's resonated with your story today, where can they go if they'd like to connect with you further? Um, yeah, if anybody wants to get in touch, I'm on Instagram, Facebook. Um, you can go via the website, drop me a message um, or drop me an email. Um, my email address is on my website, on my Instagram. So, yeah, just look up Emily Ending Photography and you should be able to find me. Um, but, yeah, please do get in touch. It's really nice hearing hearing from people who say, uh, that was really that's really inspired me to get back out now or... Yeah, it's just really nice connecting with other people who have similar passions. So yeah, please, anyone who wants to get in touch, please do. Oh, lovely. Uh, I'll put all the information to all that in the show notes below so people can can click on and, and find you. But yeah, thank you so much for your time today, Emily. It's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you. Likewise. Thank you so much, Kim. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this week's podcast. It really does mean the world to me. If you'd like to get further involved with the Photographic Connections community, you can do so at photographicconnections.com. And now that this podcast has come to an end, there's only one thing left for you to do. It's time to pick up your camera and head outdoors. There's so many incredible photographic opportunities just waiting for you to discover.